All right, so we all know that a good GPA is really important when it comes to getting into PT school, but what happens when you're actually in PT school? Then is GPA just as important? Is it less important, more important? Well, the importance of the GPA and kind of whether or not it matters once you're in PT school is kind of a yes and no answer. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you some of my personal insights onto this whole GPA thing in PT school. Hey everyone, so I've had a couple of people wondering about whether or not GPA really matters once you're in PT school. I think we're all really familiar with kind of the importance of the GPA when it comes to getting into school, but I really think that there's something worth talking about when it comes to focusing on your GPA while you're in PT school. A lot of people are striving for a 4.0 and really wanting to get that super, super high GPA. And there's certainly nothing wrong with that, but I think it's important that we talk about kind of why we're trying to achieve that high GPA and kind of where our focus and our intent is with that. So I'm just gonna share with you some personal insights here. It might be a little bit of a ramble. There might be a little bit of passion coming out, but just understand it's my own personal insight and I'm just sharing uh, all my kind of personal information with you because I want you guys to take whatever you find useful about it, take it, run with it, apply it to your own lives. And then if it doesn't resonate with you, simply just kind of drop it, leave it where it is and kind of keep moving forward. So grad school is a bit of a different beast when it comes to GPAs, because unlike undergrad, once you're in grad school, so here we're talking about PT school, it's just expected that you're going to do good. And ultimately, uh, you know, you do need to have a certain kind of threshold of a GPA in order to stay in your program. So for me, it was uh, in school a 3.3 or above, you know, the the, the way it worked was that you couldn't get anything below an 83% on any of your exams because essentially anything below 83% was less than a 3.3 and so that was considered a fail. And so you certainly want to make sure that you have a good enough GPA where you're staying in the program. But I think it's really important to ask yourself, why are you working as hard as you are? Now, I think there's a lot of students out there who are working very hard to strive for 4.0 and get that perfectionism. And while personally, there's, there's nothing wrong with that, but I would say that I think it's important to take a look at the big picture once you're in PT school as to why you're working hard and what you're hoping to achieve with that hard work. Now, I can't tell you uh, why to work hard. I mean, that's a deeply personal thing. I'll share with you some of my insight on that. But I think what's worth mentioning here is that the, the GPA is something that is kind of this guidepost or kind of these like kind of waypoints as you go through the program to let you know uh, whether or not you're really kind of you know headed down the right track because there is a correlation between how well you do in PT school and your likelihood of passing the NPT exam. But there's not as much of a direct correlation when it comes to getting that 4.0 in PT school and how well of a clinician that you're going to be thereafter. Now there's a lot to unpack with that statement, but just to kind of back things up a bit here, you know, I would really encourage any students out there who are new in their PT program to really ask themselves, why are they working hard? And you certainly don't have to share that with anyone, but for me, it was never about GPA. I knew GPA was really just kind of numbers and that the real learning of kind of my profession started once I graduated school. That's when the real learning began for me. That was kind of uh, my personal mindset. And I did strive to kind of get as high of a GPA as I could. You know, I think I graduated with around a 3.7 or something like that. But, you, you know, grad school and PT school is really kind of this pass fail kind of dichotomy. There's never, never really kind of a whole lot of uh, anything in between. And I think it's really important to understand that for someone like me, it was really about, look, I chose to work hard for a couple of different reasons. And the first reason is uh, it wasn't anything to do with grades. It's because I believe that's just who I'm called to be. I believe I'm called to be someone who does work hard and who takes pride in what they do. And so I found meaning and I found a joy in that kind of continual hard work. And then I also really kind of kept the mindset of my future patients um, kind of in the big picture. And I think the big picture is what we need to focus on here. If we're just focusing on 4.0 and 3.9 and these kind of these kind of kind of guide point numbers, so to speak, that aren't really kind of taking a look at the whole picture. Well, if we're not looking at that big picture, we're kind of missing some important things. So for me, I knew that the hard work that I put into PT school would really be something that would benefit my future patients. Because here's a news flash for you. Your patients aren't going to ask you what your GPA was when you graduated. They don't care about that. What they care about is whether or not that you can help them, whether or not you can show them kind of empathy and respect and compassion and help them to achieve you know, better functional outcomes, reduce their pain. That's what they care about. They don't care about your GPA. They care about if you're licensed and you're in good standing. But aside from that, they just care about whether you can help them or not. And again, your patients aren't going to ask you what school you went to or what your GPA was. 
And so for me, knowing that, I said, hey, it's not about perfectionism while I'm in school because I think that that's necessarily going to um, really kind of make me this um, kind of better student who's going to then go out and crush uh, the the kind of physical therapy realm as I graduate. I knew that there's still a lot to learn after that. And so I wanted to use my my grades as kind of guideposts and way markers to help me say, yeah, okay, I'm in good standing. I feel confident for passing my boards and having that entry level knowledge to basically be good enough not to hurt anyone after I graduate. But I really think it's worth mentioning that it's you need to look at the big picture with all this. So when you're in school, don't focus on just the grades and kind of focusing your efforts on thinking that if you do really good with a 4.0, that it's going to set you up with immensely awesome um, advantages over someone who graduated with a 3.5 or 3.4 or anything like that. Because the honest truth is that there's a lot of people out there who who did fine in PT school, 3.3, 3.4, and then crush it in their clinical practice right after that. And there's a lot of people who graduate with 3.9s and 4.0s who actually don't do that good. And the reason being is a lot of times it comes down to the fact that you can know everything up here, but if you don't have that emotional intelligence and that social intelligence and the compassion and empathy required to really kind of instill comfort and guidance into the patients that you're treating uh, and working with, it doesn't matter how much you know up here if you can't really kind of tap into the wavelengths that those patients are riding and really kind of show them that you are someone who gets the situation that they're in and that you're doing all you can to help them. So I'm kind of giving you a little bit of this like rambling rant here, but I want everyone to understand that if you're not crushing it in PT school and you're just maybe just scraping by, that's that's okay. I mean, it, there's beauty in working hard and you can get a lot of amazing life lessons that can better prepare you for clinical practice by actually grinding hard to keep your head above the water while you're in PT school. So if you're struggling in PT school now or you only have kind of the mediocre grades, by all means, keep working hard. You do want to have a good GPA, but understand that just because you graduate with a 3.4 or 3.5, that doesn't mean in any sort of way that you're not going to be an exemplary clinician if you really kind of put your best efforts forward once you get into the clinical realm. So I think what I'm really trying to say here is don't chase perfectionism, chase the big picture. And so for me personally, that big picture is that social and emotional intelligence, that willingness to always learn, that willingness to find beauty in hard work and really kind of find uh, the rewards in hard work itself to fall in love with that process rather than just the results. I think when you do that, that's the race you want to be running. I think if you're focusing only on making sure you get that 4.0 or that, that perfect test score each and every time, that's kind of like running the wrong race, in my personal opinion. And you're more than welcome to disagree on that. And I'm certainly not saying that grades aren't important. I think they're very important. It's very important to work for them. But just keeping that big picture in mind gives us a healthier perspective a lot of the times. So that big picture really extends far beyond what the grade point average can measure. And I think if you talk to a lot of other clinicians who are out there who have been practicing their field for a lot of years, they would likely kind of say the similar things about how they've seen people who graduate with, you know, perfect 4.0s and everything else uh, actually not really succeed in clinic uh, as much compared to people who graduated with more of that 3.5, 3.4, but really just found what they loved for that kind of area of PT that they wanted to practice. And they continually just kind of gave their best, best efforts over and over again and really made something out of themselves and turned it into a wonderful career as a result. So again, work hard, and I can't tell you why you should be working hard. That's a deeply personal thing for all of us. We all find meaning in different things. But once you kind of take a look at that big picture and then plug it into why you're working hard, I think that's going to give you a much healthier mindset to move through PT school. It's going to take stress and anxiety away from you. It's going to set you up for better, better kind of clinical uh, rewards and better clinical practice thereafter. So that's really just me kind of thinking out loud on uh, this video here. I didn't really kind of plan a whole lot to say, but I know that a couple of you out there are really struggling with that perfectionism and wanting to achieve that super perfect, super high GPA in school. And again, that's great. I don't want to discourage you from that, but I just want you to really have the right focus and the right reason as to why uh, you are achieving those grades and what your expectations are with that. So work hard, get good grades, but remember that big picture, okay? Because the grade points are waypoints or kind of guideposts along the way to show you that you are um, mastering that knowledge and that you're really setting yourself up for uh, good success with the board exams and entry to clinical practice. But when you look at that big picture, you might realize that perfectionism, it, it can kind of really be this... Um, you know, it can kind of really be this um, 
kind of false narrative in a sense. It can be used for a good thing, but again, it can kind of be your worst enemy too. So keep the healthy perspective and I think you're gonna be okay. All right, everyone, that's just a little bit of a rant for me. I hope you're all doing well. Keep looking after yourselves, keep looking after one another, keep making great things happen, and I will see you in the next video.